Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Today, the Hungry Gamer is back with another how to play video. And today, we're learning how to play Conquest Princess. Now, before I get started, I do need to point out that everything that you see here is still in the prototype phase. And among other things, this game is going to be reduced in table footprint. It will be shrinking significantly before the final product, but just do be aware of that. Also do note that there may be some rules changes as the game continues to be developed. And if that's the case, I will put those into the Klingon subtitles. So do make sure that you have those on. Now, before I get started, I do need to point out that when you play Conquest Princess, you are playing different scenarios each time. And so that means that this setup is actually not the setup for every single scenario that you might play, but this will give you a good idea of how the game works and should cover most, if not all, of the major mechanics. Now, briefly, I'm going to go over everything that you see out here, and then later on I'll talk about the player board setups because you actually do not see the player boards on the table right now that are actually just off the screen. So what we have here is in the middle we have the tiara, the ship for the Temporal Intergalactic Armed Response Agency. It is the agency that your agents work for. It is also the name of the ship itself, which is right here. And then around it, we have the halo, which is where we have all of our status information about the ship. Here we have our engineering section, tells us the status of that, the mendery, the teleporter, the comms, and the wardrobe. Here we have our power-up deck with the power line. Over here, we have our fast fashion cards. And just down here, we have the event deck, which is telling us what terrible things are going to happen at the end of the round. Up here, we have the mission board for the first standard mission, which is the one that this is obviously the setup for. And in this particular mission, you are trying to rescue the four pet co-pilots that are up there, and you'll be doing that using this board here. Over here, we have the alien invasion. And this is where these aliens are coming down and attacking the planet. That's what this board is over here. And then over here we have the Mechapede, which is the second dangerous thing that you have going on. And then finally we have status board here, which is where we will be discarding disintegrated fast fashion, disintegrated events, disintegrated power-ups, where we're keeping our potential danger tokens there, the potential enemy launch bay here, extra dice that we haven't gotten to yet, and extra tiles that may go into our bag. What bag, you ask? Well, that would be this bag right here, which is filled to the brim with these different tiles that we'll be using throughout the game. And again, I'll talk about that in just a little bit. And finally, the last thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is I wanna put out onto the teleporter our four agents. In this game, you will always play with all four agents. And again, the size of these bases and the size of these minis and the size of these standees is something that's going to be reduced as you go through. And they will all start in the teleporter for this mission, though in other missions they may start different places. The last thing you'll see is there are dice seated all throughout the board. And the board tells you what color die and what number has to go there. And so you will place those out as well. I mentioned we have our fast fashion cards, which are right here. These have been shuffled and placed there. Our power-up deck has been shuffled, and the first two have been put out right there. Along the sides, we have specific special tiles, which get added to the board, and again, the board tells you exactly where it is that they need to go, and I'll talk about what they do just a little bit later. We have our eight power cubes placed right here on the space that says power cubes. Down here, we have the mission-specific event deck. In this case, this is the Mission 1 deck, and the instructions tell you how this deck should be seated before it is shuffled and dealt out like so. Now, what's going to be happening is, now as I mentioned, you're going to attempt to be picking up these dice and place them on this board here. Every time you get all of the dice going all the way up, you will then be able to rescue one of those pet co-pilots, which is getting you on towards your win condition. As you go up these different spots, you also may unlock other powers. For example, if you fill this entire row here with the purple dice, then you would unlock one of these power-ups and you'd get to pick one and take that. If you get this entire row here, you unlock a free transport. This entire row here, you get a free fast fashion card. This entire row here, one person gets to heal one. And this entire row here, one player gets a free permanent power-up. Additionally, when you get a die, out onto the board on these green spots here, you're going to get to flip over the pet co-pilot and see which one it happens to be. In this case, this one is hot dog. And 
This specific one is going to give you a power that you're able to use, and what's important is it is either for the purple or the green hero. Those are the two heroes that can utilize Hot Dog, this particular pet co-pilot. Now, with these two sideboards, and again, I'm going to talk a little bit later about exactly how they work, but what's going to be happening is the agents are going to be moving around through the ship here, and they'll be attacking various bad guys that may have boarded the ship, and they're represented by these tokens here. And then in addition to that, they'll be utilizing the different rooms on the ship, and again, I'll talk about that in just a little bit, or they may be teleporting via the teleporter over to these different planets where they are dealing with these different bad things that are going on. Again, the alien invasion here and the mechapede over there. And when they're on these sides of the board, they'll be interacting with this. And if they want to do something over here, they will have to be teleported back. And again, I will explain that in just a moment. Now, let's go ahead and talk a bit about the core board here and the things that you can do on the tiara. Now, the first thing that I need to explain to you is how you are able to do any of the actions that you are going to attempt to do during the game. And to do that, you're going to use your two-part player board. And that is your gauntlet right here, which connects right here into your fashion plate. And your fashion plate is a spot on your board where you're able to place your various fashion items, which are your upgrades, onto your character. Now, every character starts the game with one particular core suit. And in this case, for purple, it's the, intra, it's the interdimensional shell. And this allows this agent to always act as if their space is a teleporter location. And that'll make sense in just a bit. However, some of the other characters have different abilities. For example, blue has the slipstream mesh, which means at the beginning of blue's turn, it can take a power cube. However, you'll notice there's these other spots around the sides, and you're going to be able to place various other fashion items that you get, be, them, be they fast fashion, into those spots, or it might be a more permanent power, like so. And what matters here is that you're only able to have one item in each spot. So at any time, you can disintegrate a fashion item you have to gain one of these power cubes that I've alluded to so far. Now, on your gauntlet, you'll have space for two armor patches, which in essence is your health. You'll have four action discs, which go right up here. You have space to place any power cubes that you gain, which I've mentioned before there. You're going to have your transformation sequence, which I'll explain in just a moment. And you have a space over here, which is where you place action cubes when you've used them. You'll also notice over there you have a space for your pet co-pilot when and if you have unlocked it, and it will go right there to remind you of what the ability is. Now, let's talk about the different things that you can do on your turn. The top one here, this is the move action. And what that's going to allow you to do is you'll simply slide it down onto the move arrow and that will allow you to move one sector. The same holds true if you're down on the planet, though of course you can only move left and right there. Or if there is a die there, you can place a disc on that and collect the die. In this case, it would then go over and be placed onto the pet board. And I'll talk about that in just a moment, how that works. Or if there is already a tile on the board, you can move that down and you can pick that up and put it back into the bag. And I'll tell you how to get that out onto the board in just a moment. The next thing that you can do is you can shoot. And you're going to shoot when there is a bad guy on the tiara with you, like so. And if you are in the same sector, same room, you can slide it down to the shoot and then you're going to reach into your bag and you are going to draw out a single tile. In this case, this is what is called a critical miss. And what that means is you place it right here onto your board, and I'll explain what that does in a bit. But since it's a critical miss, you lose one armor patch. Then perhaps I want to shoot again. So again, I would go into the bag. And this time, I got a hit. So I would take the enemy, move it aside, and I would leave the hit tile on the board like so, and it will stay there until someone picks it up. The other option is, I could have pulled a miss, and that would just sit right here, just like the other one, and then we'll just pretend that my third shot is what actually hit. Now, this is also a decent time to talk about some of these other tiles that you're able to get off of the tiara, and there's three types of tiles here. This one here counts both as a hit, and it provides one power cube to the agent that drew it, and like the others, it would stay out on the board. This one here will both heal the attacking agent, 
one armor patch, and again also counts as a hit, while this one here counts as a hit, and then would allow you to select one of these power-up cards from the power line, which is right over here. And then the last thing they're able to do is you are able to use the engage. Now this is important. Now it's important to note that any time you do an engage action, that will be the end of your turn, with the exception of the green player, whose core suit allows you to not end your turn when you do your first engage. This is also a good time to tell you that any time you are sharing a space with another player, because friendship is power, you are able to use their core suit as well. So in this case, if blue was in the exact same space as green, they would be able to do an engage and not end their turn, and then either do another engage or another action right after that. Now what the engage does is going to vary depending on where it is you are on the board. Now, as I mentioned, depending on where you are on the board, that will determine what the engage action does. And so let's go ahead and go through those very quickly. First off, you have the engineering section, which will allow you to repair any other section on the ship for using that engage action. Or it will allow you to add the Titan tile into the bag. And I'll explain in just a few moments how your ship gets damaged. Over here in the wardrobe, it will allow you to take one of these power-ups right here, or add some of the power-ups into the bag. Additionally, you can take any discarded power-ups and reshuffle them into the deck. Down here in comms, it will allow you to take all tiles on the tiara that are on the board and return them to the bag. Additionally, comms has what is called telemetry, which gives you a little glimpse into the future of what the bad events might be coming your way. Over here, in the middle, we have the teleporter, and the teleporter allows you to teleport anybody from anywhere on, this, on the tiara or on the sideboards and move them anywhere that has this symbol right here. And there are a few places on the board that have that symbol. In many ways, this is like Star Trek, where they will beam someone up from off the planet, but they always show back up on that little teleporter path. Here in the, in the Mendery, you'll be able to heal two armor patches on one agent that is currently in the Mendery. Then when we look over here at these other planets, there are other things that can be done. Here in the Invasion, if your character is in the big cannons here, in the big guns, by doing an engage, you're allowed to draw two tiles out of the bag and resolve them in any order that you want. And then take this hit and place it right here, which would damage one of these bad guys right here. Now the other thing that you're going to see is that there are dice here, and this is actually how you're going to claim those dice. One of the things that you're able to do is sometimes this entire board is going to move, and then if you're able to damage the bad guys that have the dice, then you will be able to claim that die, and again, potentially place it on the board over here, and I will explain that in just a minute. If you're ever able to defeat all of the invaders in the particular row that they're in, you will get all of your tiles back, and you'll flip it over, and they have all been defeated. Now this is important because as you're going through, there will be various events that happen that will cause everything to move, and the bad guys will move down like so. And as they move down, more bad guys will come in above them, and you'll notice that there are dice there, and that's actually the only way to get some of these dice, and they'll continue moving down and down and down. And what will happen is, if these bad guys ever hit the planet, you will take a series of disruptions, which, are, which will lead you towards losing the game. Now over here, when you engage on the planet, it allows you to move one of these tiles one space right or left. So, like so, or like so, though of course you can do any of those. Now, if you're looking closely at the mech feed here, you'll notice that not only are there dice on the planet that you can pick up, but there's also these arrows next to the spaces that you can damage the mechapede. And what that means is, when you shoot the mechapede, you cover up the spot, and it's going to move, it's going to wiggle following those arrows. And your goal is to, one, as before, get the dice, but also you can't defeat the mechapede unless you destroy all of the three heads on it. And so as you're shooting things, it's going to be moving around, making it harder and harder for you to actually hit the heads. Now the last two things that I want to point out here are how you use power cubes. At any time, you can take a power cube 
and use it on one of these three spots here to give you a fifth action on your turn. And it would simply go there like that. However, the other thing that power cubes are used for is to go through your transformation sequence. And if you look up here at the top of the board, you will see that the card says for purple to transform, they need to have done this sequence here of a move, a shoot, a move, and then an engage. In addition to that, they need to have four power cubes in their reserve, like so. If that were to happen, they would take this, they would, if they were to accomplish that, they would immediately get to do the power on the transformation sequence card. In this case, beginning with purple and moving clockwise, all agents may immediately teleport if they are able to. Then this would flip over, and in addition to that, they would get to flip over their core suit, and now it would be more powerful, both for them and anybody who is in their location and sharing their core suit. Then, once the transformation is done, all the power would be returned to the power core. Now, the last thing that I want to point out is, after all players have gone, you will go through the event phase, which I'll explain in just a moment. But when it comes back to your turn again, what's going to happen is, you will then place all of your discs back up here to the top to be able to use again. Now you'll notice that there are these two misses here. And now I have a choice. I can either place the disc on top of the tile, which means you're going to hold on to that failure, and that will reward you with two things. One, a power cube, though you can only get one per turn, and it will also keep this miss out of the bag. And I could choose to keep a second one if I wanted, though that would though that would not reward me with a second power cube this turn, or I could let that go back into the bag. It's important to note that any of these tiles that you lock in here with your disc means that you do not get to take that action. So when it came back to my turn, I would have to start here, and I would only have three actions like so, though I could use my power cube to take a fourth. And that pretty much covers the things that you are able to do on the board. The last thing has to do with the dice that we mentioned earlier. And I've already told you how you get to see what the pet co-pilots are, which ones where, the bonuses that you get along the side, but I haven't told you how you're able to place the dice. When you collect a die, it has to go on its number and color, but you have to start at the bottom of the board, and then you have to connect orthogonally to something that's already there. So if I have this two there, I can put that two like so. However, if this two is not already out, I could not put the red two right there. Um, there's just two things left for you to understand before you can jump into this game. And just as a reminder, depending on what scenario you're doing, there will be different rules and different things that will change up for that specific scenario. So do, again, do just keep that in mind. I mentioned at the end of each round, you will have to resolve an event card. Now, each scenario has its own deck of event cards, and depending on how damaged your comms are, will tell you how many of the events that you can see. So if your comms are fully repaired, you'll be able to see two cards. If they've been damaged once, your telemetry will be one, and you will only be able to see a single card. And if they're completely destroyed, then you'll just have to draw off the top of the deck. And on these events, we have three different columns of things that are going to happen. We have the invasion, that was the aliens over on that side of the board. We have the mechapede, which is over on this side of the board. Then we have the tiara in the middle. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna have to choose whoever the lead player is, is going to have to choose which one of these they are going to take. And, and that's going to be chosen by the lead agent, though there is obviously some discussion and cooperation that goes along with that. Now, the way that you're going to choose your lead agent each round is going to be whichever agent has the fewest discs and or tiles on their active spot of their board. So in this case, this player would have four. If they had perhaps missed here, now they would have five. If they also had an energy over here, they would have six. And so whoever has the fewest of those at the end of the turn will be named the lead agent and will have this token here. And so the lead agent is going to get to pick which one is going to happen. And I'll show you what these are going to do on the two sides of the board in just a moment. But let's talk about the tiara. So what we have here is we have either we will put a bad guy on four and zero, and that's all that happens. Or we'll put a bad guy on two 
and 8, and then they will attack. Now, when they attack, if there is an agent there, then the agent will simply lose one of their armor patches. However, if there is not an agent there, then the TR itself will take damage. So in this case, the engineering would flip over and become slightly worse because it would have taken damage there. And the Mendery, because there's no one there to take the damage, would also flip over. Now, if it were to get damaged again, it would be completely destroyed until it gets repaired. And in that situation, should, we'll say, engineering be completely destroyed and it gets attacked again, then you would suffer what is called a disruption. And this is how you're going to potentially lose the game. Now, I've already mentioned the power cards over here. And sometimes you'll be able to draw them and you take them and you'll be able to use them. And then any ones that you don't take wind up being discarded and then you deal a lot more. However, every time you take a disruption, you see how many disruption tokens you have. In this case, in the standard mission, you start the game with two. And that would mean that you would take two of these disruptions and you would disintegrate them or discard them from the game. If at any point your deck completely runs out, then you have lost the game. Now, the other thing that happens is when you take a disruption, you discard your two cards in this case, then you would add another disruption to the pile. So next time you take one, you would draw three cards and disintegrate them. And then again, add another disruption to the pile. So it gets progressively worse and worse and worse as it goes. Now, let's just say, for the sake of argument, that I selected this one right here. On this side of the board, what's going to happen is the invasion is going to move down. So I would draw this one here. Everything would slide down. And then this one here would flip over, and now we have more aliens coming in. And then I would also put a die right out here to mark that. And then every single one of these aliens would shoot straight down. And the danger would be, of course, if you were down there, you would then be getting hit many, many times. Though, of course, if you're in the bunker here, you are protected from being attacked. And just like when the ship gets damaged too many times, if a player loses both their armor patches and then would take more damage, there would again be a disruption. And the disruption represents the TR itself kind of resetting the timeline, but again, losing its power, so it can only do that so many times. Meanwhile, over here, the Mechapede would attack. Now the Mechapede, each of the heads spits this goo. And what the goo does is it comes down and it just kind of gums up the work. So if you were to move through there, you'd have to then spend a move action to remove the goo before you're able to move on. And if at any point all of the goo is out on the board and it tries to shoot more, you will then take disruptions. If the goo happens to hit you directly, you take damage. Then the last thing here is it would regenerate. So any mechapede part that's not completely destroyed would then regenerate. So in this case, this head's still here, it's not destroyed, this tile will come right off and go back into the bag. Now the other option on the mechapede would have been to shift all sections of the mechapede back towards the center. So we would simply go here and here. Now of course there are other types of event cards that may be drawn. And I'm not going to go through all of them because they are clearly spelled out on the player aids that you have right here and here, and they are double-sided to help you out. But the important one is that sometimes on this side here, the guns are going to move one side or the other, which is kind of the way that you're able to use these guns with the engage action to kind of blast your way on through. And that's pretty much how this game works. You're going to be playing around and around, going through all these different events every turn when bad things are going to happen, and usually you're going to be choosing the one that you think is the least bad as you're going through, but every now and then you're going to wind up drawing something like this which will be a special event that will modify the bag, or it might be something that hurts you right away, etc., etc. And all of them tell you exactly what it is that you need to do when you draw them. And the only other thing that I haven't mentioned yet is how you gain these fast fashion cards. Because I've talked about them a few times, and quite simply, every time you teleport, your molecules are exfoliated, and you come out looking better than when you went in. So every time you teleport, you get to draw a fast fashion card. And as a reminder, these are different one-use abilities that you're able to equip onto your hero. There are some nasty little critters like that, which will give you short, brief bonuses once you use them. Or you can always disintegrate them 
or remove them from the game and get one power cube instead. And that is a broad overview of how this game is played. I hesitate to say this is a complete how to play because there are so many different scenarios and different setups which change the game, but hopefully this gives you a very good idea of how the game works and you can jump into your first game and try it out. So as always, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you right away. And if you're curious to know what I think of the game, you can check out my preview video, which is linked in the description. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Maybe consider becoming a channel member. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.